Good morning. Thank morning. you for being here. And good morning to Uniclec. I'm just trying to balance. Let me, yeah, let's just sit. Yes, exactly. We, we, we didn't think there was water, so it's not that we're really thirsty. It's just that we weren't sure that there were, you know, <laughs> there was water for us. Um, Nick Clare, uh, President of Global Affairs of Meta. Uh, you're really living in Silicon Valley. Are you blending in? Well, we I, don't, don't I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't wear this suit to, um, to the Silicon Valley office. No, that would look very out of place. Yeah. People don't wear suits and ties. This is, this is the uniform I used to used to wear when I was in politics. So. For the occasion, right? <laughs> yes, right. this is for the occasion. Yeah. Um, um, I was in uh, Panama in 2017 mm -hmm. uh, for another summit of the Americas, and um, I remember Max, Mark Zuckerberg was there. He met with a number of authorities and presidents um, back then. And the focus of uh, back then Facebook was um, connectivity, yeah. uh, the project, internet.org. Fast forward to today, to this morning, and now we're talking about the metaverse as a priority, as had, um, it has been announced since October. Mm -hmm. um, what is exactly, because you also talk about um, the future, but not really because it's already here. Yeah, um, so, so in, in one sense, the metaverse is also about, it's all about connecting people and it's all about how the internet is evolving to allow people to communicate with each other, to connect with each other in, in ever more um, direct and immersive ways. And if you think about the evolution of the internet, you know, we moved from from desktops to laptops, and now we all carry phones around constantly. Um, you know, we don't think, we don't think that um, carrying phones in your hand is necessarily going to be the way that we interact with the digital world forever. We think it'll probably be something that you put on the bridge of your nose, maybe with some computing power around your wrist. Um, and if you, so that sort of the hardware has developed in that direction, but if you think also about the, the, the form of communication, we used to communicate by text and then we moved to photos and videos now short form videos are very much the sort of you know most sort of um, fast growing format about 50% of content on on Facebook is now short form video the, the the metaverse in other words augmented and virtual reality technologies they offer us the opportunities to do the next logical thing which is to communicate with each other as if we really feel we are in each other's presence. And by the way, if this sounds like science fiction, I mean, I, I already for about a year yes. have been holding my weekly meeting of my team in the metaverse. We wear our Quest headsets. I have my team distributed around the world and we sit around a virtual table and it really is remarkable. I mean, you, of course, you are an avatar. You look like a sort of cartoon representation of yourself but you really do feel that you're breathing the same air as the, uh, as the people you're sitting around that virtual table with, um, partly because the audio technology is incredibly sophisticated. So it's, it's how can I put it? It's both, it both sounds somewhat revolutionary, but it's actually a relatively natural evolution of where the in internet has come from over the last couple of decades. So it's a uh, more sense of presence yeah. through avatars. Yeah, well, avatars and then, uh, and then eventually, of course, holograms. So eventually, over the next 10, 15 years or so on, the ambition is that instead of having this conversation sitting next to each other in these somewhat wobbly uh, <laughs> chairs, um, that's a small memo to the uh, organizers here, um, you, you need a fine <laughs> sense of balance to do this. Um, uh, uh, we, would be able to, um, we would be able to meet in the metaverse as holograms with, you know, of each other, and we would, f we would be able to play chess, We'd be able to, uh, just, you know, kind of. We could be able to. We'd be able to play board games. We'd be able to go together to see a, a debate or a concert or in another part of the metaverse. Um, and this sounds very futuristic, but if for anyone who hasn't tried it, I would strongly recommend just try. You know, in, in our case, I mean, Microsoft and Google, they've, everyone's got their own different products. But we've got something called Horizon World. Yes. You can you know, use a, a Quest headset to enter into the Horizon world. And it's, 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 of course, we will look back on it in 10 years' time as being somewhat primitive at the moment, that we're all bobbing around in the metaverse as sort of cartoon avatars of each other without, just with, from the waist up. Yes. You don't have legs yet in the <laughs> metaverse. But it does, I think for anyone who hasn't tried it, I would urge you to try it because it is remarkable how quickly it is easy to imagine that this will open up huge opportunities, socially, culturally, economically. Just think about the potential for education. It means that teachers will be able to take kids from a school here in Los Angeles to walk the virtual streets of ancient Rome 
to teach a class of 12 year olds what the ancient you know what ancient Rome was like I, I, you know I think the I think the uh, the potential is enormous you said um, I urge you to try it has anybody here tried it um, can you help me raising your hand you have tried it over there amazing okay <laughs> how do you like it do you like it yes you see Great. Okay, yeah, so, so we have people who know about what, what we're talking about. And it's important because you're developing that platform. It's, it's in the works, and it's not only Horizon Worlds. It would also be Horizon Workrooms, um, yeah. since we're talking to CEOs and, you know, yeah. and businessmen, the business people. So. Yeah, so, so Horizon Workrooms is our product, which allows people to, to organize meetings. As the name describes, workrooms. Yeah. Um, and as I say, I, I, I've... Um, I've been doing that for some time now, and it's remarkable how quickly the technology has developed. Uh, about a year ago or so, when I first started using it, it sometimes it was a slightly disorientating feeling. Uh, but now the avatars have become ever more granular, their expressions have become ever more um, realistic, mm -hmm. um, and the audio technology is quite unusual. So in, if, you, if you now use Horizon Workrooms, and you get up from the table to do something on the whiteboard, or you walk around the table, the people listening to you and you're talking with, with you know, the, the, the voice travels just as it does in, in real life with, with, with the person. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I think it, it's, a, it's a glimpse. It's a glimpse of what is, of what is possible. Um, and remember, um, in the future, I mean, thankfully, no one company is going to build the metaverse. The meta is not, you know, meta is not going to build the metaverse. Mark Zuckerberg is not going to be the emperor of the metaverse. Um, it's going to be, it's much more like the internet. It'll be, no, you know, no one company owns the internet. Yeah. Um, and the key thing will be in the future, in my view, is to avoid um, the balkanization of the metaverse such that you have, you know, a meta metaverse, a Google metaverse, a, a, an Apple metaverse, a Microsoft metaverse. And I think the companies either need to voluntarily or perhaps need to be pressed mm -hmm. by decision makers mm -hmm. to ensure that the whole web of interoperable standards function. So just in the same way that I can send a photo from yes. my phone to yours, even yes. though I might be using an Apple phone, you might Apple, be using a Samsung phone and from, from iOS to, to Android and so on. We need, we need the same web of interoperable standards, because if we don't, from a user point of view, it'll become a fragmented experience. And I think that's one of the big public policy issues that I talk to policymakers about. Um, so that takes research, innovation, policy, yeah. among other things. But let's talk about what's also, part, um, I think it's juicy because it talks about opportunity, economic opportunity and progress. And you recently wrote an op-ed piece about that and Latin America, how does Latin America is already playing out and um, exactly how, which countries through which organizations in the creation of this metaverse? Well, I think the remarkable thing about uh, Latin America and the Caribbean is um, even when the, 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 the Quest hardware is not yet available in the shops, it's amazing how many people are using AR effects already. I mean, around 100 million people in Latin America, that's what roughly equivalent to the size of the combined populations of Italy and Spain, mm. are, using, are using AR uh, effects. Um, Brazil and Mexico alone are amongst the top 10 countries who have creators who are creating these. I was reading about just this morning about a Brazilian sort of uh, virtual artist mm. who, um, who who now produces these these AR effects. When I mean AR effects, I mean, you, you know, these effects where you can put this kind of sort of cartoon AR effect on your face and, 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 and stuff like that. And he's he's now um, one of the leading developers for AR effects for the um, NBA here, here, in, here in the US. So I, I think there is a sort of creativity and a flair in Latin America, which you already see um, in the way in which people use, I mean, our AR technology is called AR Spark, and it's heavily used already in, in, in Latin America. And that, I think, again, is a glimpse of how much economic opportunity these augmented and virtual reality technologies will offer, because you'll, in effect, be creating a whole new a platform ecosystem upon which people can create digital value, whether it's buying services or, or, or you know goods and services in the in the online world. And, and I, I I certainly think by the sort of the, those early indications suggest that Latin America could benefit greatly. There was a, um, a, a, a an independent uh, research group. I mean, we commissioned it. I, th mm -hmm. I think they're called um, Analysis Group. I might, I'm, I might need to check the name of the. The, the, the research group, but they recently estimated that they believe over the next 10 years, 
the metaverse could bring a 5% uh, improvement to Latin America's GDP if these, if these online digital opportunities really do materialize. So I think the potential uh, for, for the region, for the Latin American region, really is uh, really very considerable. And you also mentioned um, the potential use for it, uh, learning, yeah. trade, yeah. Um, medicine. I mean, telemedicine, I think it's a key issue, especially in, in a continent where we don't have trains like in Europe. I mean, where really rural areas probably benefit. But affordability is also an issue. How are you tackling that? Yeah, I mean, affordability is, is but just before we get on to the affordability, I mean, you, you say, you say the you know, medical application. I mean, just imagine if you're a, I'm not making this up, you're a medical student in Sao Paulo, mm. and you can do a virtual uh, course with a surgeon in Frankfurt yeah. who is showing you in, in you know, highly kind of realistic uh, form how to perform complex you know, open heart surgery, mm -hmm. for instance. I think, I think that the, the potential for education and health really is great. But in terms of the accessibility, yeah, look, let, let's be honest about this. The moment you have anything to do with hardware, there is, a, there is a barrier, and the barrier is the cost of the hardware. I mean, look at, you know, lots of the fancy phones that everybody's, you know, got in their pockets or their hands now. You know, they still co cost a lot, and they're not accessible to many people around yeah. the world. So we, we really are trying to do two things to address that. Firstly, to keep the cost of the hardware down as much as possible. Our, our central business model is not to make a, a very significant margin on the hardware. Uh, our central business model is all built around commerce in the metaverse event eventually. Yeah. Um, and secondly, and I think this is very important, and, and you'll see some announcements from us in the, in the, in the coming weeks and months, um, we shouldn't think about the metaverse as something which only exists through 3D hardware. It can also be accessed through your phone. So one of the things you will see us announce, uh, I, I, I hope uh, relatively soon, is new ways in which people can access uh, our AR and VR uh, worlds and, and, and apps and services through their phones. And I think that will dramatically, that'll create a sort of bridge to the metaverse, if I can put it like that, in a way which will be much more accessible than if everybody had to wait to buy the, you know, the latest, the latest headset. Um, it sounds promising, but also at the same time, um, since we're, um, it's being built up, um, and there are lessons learned from yep. past experiences with um, platforms, social media, etc. How do we avoid this um, tool of progress becoming a tool of more division, more polarization, more risk to children? Yep. And all you know, and probably the direct question would be: Is the Facebook playbook applicable? To the meta playbook. No, I think I think I really do think it's very different this time. I mean, if you look of, if you look at the sort of back over the last fifteen odd years, certainly as far as social media is concerned, you had these apps which just erupted in in, in I mean the, the growth of, of you know Facebook, Instagram, and so on, and now TikTok, the fastest growing social media mm -hmm. app ever. It's just, it's just so explosive. These net footwork effects are so powerful, um, and in many ways, I think what you've seen over the last ten years is. We, we, we've gone from sort of this huge mood swing where, you know, 10 years ago, social media was the solution to all of our problems, and now it's alleged to be the source of all of our problems. Neither are true, of course. It's, it's always somewhere in between. And you've seen this pendulum swing from tech utopia and tech euphoria a decade or so ago to sort of tech pessimism now. And I think that, and I, and I think, you know, and you now see governments catching up and passing laws to put in guardrails which were not in place a decade or so ago. I think this time we can do it very, very differently. And the reason for that is because the, the, the metaverse is going to take really quite a long time before it properly materializes. I mean, this, this technology that I'm talking about is going to take 10, 15 years to really fully mature. And my view is we need to take that time. Um, to put those guardrails in place at the same time as the technology itself is evolving. And that's why, for instance, you know, Meta, I've, I've come together with uh, my counterparts in, 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 in Google and, and, and Microsoft in, in a, uh, a forum which is chaired by the World Economic Forum to mm -hmm. ask some of these foundational governance questions about the metaverse. We've created industry-wide something called the XR Association, which is asking some of these big questions about interoperability, safety, integrity, and so on. So I, I, I am op I'm optimistic we can avoid the, the kind of 
the, 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 the sort of reverse chronology that we've had over the last 15 years, where the technology came first and then the guardrails came second. I think we should try this time to do both in parallel, and, and I'm pretty optimistic that we can do that. Um, including, of course, and let me just mention, um, mental health for children, uh, not weakening democracy since there's a lot of polarization, and I'm sure you coming from the UK know what that sure. means, and especially on social media. Um, it takes a village. Um, how are you he uh, getting Latin America to take part in the building of this? Well, one way is, is, is to um, fund research in Latin America on exactly these questions, on safety, on, on use, on, on child well-being. And we have uh, established a, well, two funds, a $150 million fund to work with um, educational experts to develop the educational application of, uh, of our AR, VR technologies, and a $50 million fund, which um, we've already allocated actually to a, a number of universities and research institutes across Latin America to look into some of these foundational, foundational questions. But you look, you know, at the same time, um, again, uh, I, I hope you will see from, from, from us in the, in the next few uh, weeks and months, some, some further announcements we make about, for instance, about parental controls mm -hmm. on, um, on AR and VR technologies. And of course, because of the nature of the technology, you can actually give, potentially at least, parents a great deal of real-time visibility to what their kids are doing, much more so than, than necessarily what kids do when they post things on, on, on social media. So the, the immediacy of communication in the metaverse also offers opportunities when it comes to protection and safety and so on. Um, you know, if, you are, if you feel you're in an uncomfortable position in the metaverse, or you feel you encounter someone who's saying things you don't like, you literally just leave. I mean, you can just literally, with a, in, a, in, a, in a millisecond, you can literally just ab abstract yourself from that, from that situation. And also the, the content doesn't sort of, doesn't lie around, doesn't sort of go viral like it does in, in social media. It's a, it's a very different form of communication. It's much more ephemeral. It's much more like this kind of speech mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, mm -hmm. you and I say the words and they, they well, yeah. maybe someone's recording them, but, yeah. but you know what I mean? Uh, so, so the speech in the metaverse is quite different to the persistence and the permanence or the semi-permanence of posts that people post and then share yeah. in, in social media. And that, I think, means that we need to think about how you moderate that content or or, 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 or seek to try and um, you know check what people are doing in a very different way. I, I think, in other words, I think the analogy with social media is actually in many ways potentially quite unhelpful mm -hmm. because it's quite a different form of communication. I um, read Mark Zuckerberg was just projecting that um, it can reach a billion people within the next decade. Yeah. Where are we at this point? And probably the call to action, uh, what would you say to the CEOs that are here today when they're hearing about the metaverse in Latin America and the opportunities it can create? Well, I, I think my message would be um, it, it's an enormous opportunity. It's very exciting. It's, um, it has applications which are commercial, which are societal, uh, in health, in education, in how you uh, run your companies how you uh, organize the workplace, but also how you think in, in future in terms of the goods and services that your companies provide. The metaverse is in a sense a bit like, it's just, it's a new computing platform. That's the way to think about it. It's, a, it's literally the next generation of the internet. And in the same way that everybody's businesses and everybody's work life has been affected by the current internet, it will be by augmented and virtual reality technologies as well. So, and if you haven't, try it out and take some time and, and work out how you think it might affect your work in, in the years to come. And that implies probably rules and standards, even for companies yeah. that when they're using it, no? Yeah, of course. And, and you know, we have our rules and standards. Uh, societal rules and standards will develop as well. Industry-wide rules and standards will evolve as well. Um, and I think we need to, we all need to kind of operate with a mixture of excitement about the potential of the technology and humility that we don't have all the answers yeah. yet. And we should be open about that, that this is a journey, we're in the early stages of the journey, and we need to work together, civil society, academia, regulators, lawmakers, governments, industry, to work out what the rules of the road will be for this new computing platform. Well, I guess I'll see you on the metaverse next time. Yep. I'm probably more Silicon Valley looking like and less of a suit looking. <laughs> <laughs> Nicolette, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, and Thanks. thank you. Thanks.